Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I will be discussing the philosophy of Ayn Rand. So Ayn Rand, she was a rather controversial author, perhaps one of the most controversial authors who have ever lived. And she's most famous for her lengthy novel Atlas Shrugged and her philosophical system which she called Objectivism, which is in part presented throughout the book Atlas Shrugged. And although Atlas Shrugged is an impressive work of fiction, and because of this by many considered to be a must-read, Ayn Rand's philosophy is extremely controversial. And as a result, it appears as if one can either love or hate Atlas Shrugged, as well as the philosophical ideas presented throughout the book. And even recently, a famous NFL player was criticized heavily after indicating that he had Ayn Rand's book on his bookshelf, which goes to show how controversial she, she still is. So in this video I will be summarizing the philosophy of Ayn Rand, mostly as it is presented in Atlas Shrugged. If you have not yet read Atlas Shrugged, then hopefully this video will help you in deciding whether you find it worthwhile to spend your time reading through this lengthy, lengthy novel, which in my edition has 1069 pages. And in case you have already read Atlas Shrugged, then I hope that this video will help you to better understand the philosophy of Ayn Rand. So personally, I found, Ayn Rand, uh, found Atlas Shrugged to be an extremely interesting read, even though it took me about 200 pages to really get into the story. Um, so here you can actually see the book uh, which I have, which is quite small for the amount of sizes, and yeah, the pages kind of started to fall out <laughs> even at the end. Um, so I can understand why many of, of her ideas are, are really controversial. However, I personally believe that Ayn Rand also presents some interesting ideas which are still valid today. Therefore, even though if one were to disagree entirely with her philosophy, I believe it's still worthwhile to familiarize oneself with the ideas of Ayn Rand. So in this video I will begin with a short summary of Atlas Shrugged, without uh, too many spoilers. And this short summary is followed by an analysis of some of the most important philosophical ideas of Ayn Rand. At the end, I also shortly address the problems which I personally believe are connected to the philosophy of Ayn Rand. And also just to note, uh, although this channel mostly focuses on philosophical topics, Ayn Rand's philosophy cannot really be discussed without touching upon certain political or economical themes as well. So Ayn Rand's book Atlas Shrugged was published in 1957 and it's one of the longest works of fiction ever written. Atlas Shrugged presents a utopian in the United States where society appears to be moving back in time rapidly. Fundamentally the story portrays a long but at least initially unequal battle between two groups of people. On the one hand there's a group of people consisting of hard-working industrialists, uh, inventors and most notably also a railroad executive. On the other hand, there's a group of people consisting of politicians, scientists and jealous industrialists who do whatever they can to undermine the former group of people. And the first group of people are in essence trying to expand their businesses and earn a lot of money. And the second group of people, they're often driven by jealousy, doing whatever they can to undermine the aspirations of the former group. And they do so by constantly enacting stricter regulations and directives which have a negative impact on the industrialists. And they claim uh, these rules and regulations are necessary for the greater good of society and argue that it's a, it is a moral duty to help the poor. However, according to Ayn Rand, the second group, they do not really care that much about the poor. They simply hate the rich and they use morality as an excuse to defend their destructive policies. The rules and regulations, they continue to, come, to get stricter and eventually they seriously undermine the levels of production and innovation of the entire society. Moreover, some of the people of the first group, they no longer want to partake in such a society and they decide to go on a strike, resulting in factories shutting down and negatively impacting society even further. So from this short but far from complete summary, it will most likely already become clear which group of people were favored by Ayn Rand and which group of people she detested. So in short, Ayn Rand believed that the industrialists, innovators, scientists, etc. who aim to earn money uh, and through their increased production and innovations benefit society as a whole, should be left alone as much as possible. In essence, Ayn Rand was a strong proponent of capitalism combined with an almost radical form of 
laissez-faire. So this philosophy consists of several elements, um, which I will be discussing now. And I will also um, share with you some quotes from Atlas Shrugged, which I believe illustrate these, these elements of Ayn Rand's philosophy. So one of the most important aspects of Ayn Rand's philosophy, which becomes immediately clear when one starts to read Atlas, Atlas Shrugged, is its focus on individual freedom. So Ayn Rand argued that if an individual were to be completely free, he or she would be able to pursue his or her own desires, which according to Rand, might benefit society as a whole in the end. She wrote, You know only, as from a great clear distance, that man exists for the achievements of his desires. And he wondered why he stood here. He wondered who had the right to demand that he waste a single irreplaceable hour of his life. Ayn Rand believed that one of the worst things a government could do would be to limit the freedom of the individual. She wrote, He saw for the first time that he had never known fear because, against any disaster, he had held the omnipotent cure of being able to act. No, he thought. Not an assurance of victory. Who can ever have that? Only the, cl only the chance to act, which is all one needs. In Atlas Shrugged, because of bill passed by the government, industrialists such as uh, Hank Reardon, were limited in the number of businesses they could possess. And as a result, they became dependent on other, often government-controlled businesses, which were a lot, a lot less real, reliable. And therefore, the productivity of, of these industrialists declined, which negatively impacted society at large. Moreover, according to Rand, those that attempt to limit freedom are often acting in their own self-interest. To do so, they might use many possible excuses, according to Rand, often arguing that they are doing so in order to benefit the poor, etc., while in fact, however, they are merely jealous of the riches and capabilities of successful people. Rand wrote, It is the person who would sell his soul for a nickel, who is loudest in proclaiming hatred of money, and he has good reason to hate it. The lovers of money are willing to work for it. And Rand considered these kinds of people to be plain looters. She wrote, Run for your life from any man who tells you the money is evil. That sentence is the leper's bell of an approaching looter. So long as men live together on earth and need means to deal with one another, their only substitute, if they abandon money, is the muzzle of a gun. Fundamentally, according to Rand, those who hate money are jealous because they do not have the means to acquire it. As a result, they may change the rules in the name of virtue, while in fact, while in fact they are just looting. She wrote, then you will see the rise of the man of the double standard, the man who lives by force, yet count on those who live by trade to create value of their loot and money, the men who are the hitchhikers of virtue. According to Rand, however, this entire process can quickly result in a downward spiral, wherein everyone tries to rob everyone. She wrote, In a moral society, these are the criminals, and the statutes are written to protect you against them. But when a society establishes criminals by right and looters by law, men who use force to seize the wealth of disarmed victims, the money becomes its creator. The money becomes its creator's avenger. Such looters believe it is safe to rob defenseless men once they pass a law to disarm them. However, as soon as the rules of society have changed, more looters will come, who will equally want their share. Ayn Rand wrote, "But their loot becomes the magnet for other looters." Who get it from them as they got it. Then the race goes not to be the ablest at production, but to those most, most ruthless and brutality. When force is the standard, the murderer wins over the pickpocket, and then that society vanishes in a spread of ruins and laughter. As such, to be successful according to the standards of this kind of society, instead of being productive, one must be almost barbaric, according to Rand. Another important characteristic of Ayn Rand's philosophy is Rand's admiration for those who have a strong purpose. Even if one has sufficient freedom and one is living in a society wherein productivity is encouraged, one is still required a purpose to benefit, benefit from such a society. She wrote, The rising steps of steel and the steps of a being intent upon his goal, this is what they had been. All the men who had lived to invent the lights, the steel, the furnaces, the motors, they were the world. They, not the men who crouched in dark corners, half-begging, half-threatening. In the dystopian society presented to us in Atlas Shrugged, purpose has been replaced by fear. Ayn Rand wrote, I've seen the change. They used to rush through here, and it was wonderful to watch. 
It was the hurry of men who knew where they were going, and were eager to get there. Now they are hurrying because they are afraid. It is not purpose that drives them, it is fear. They are not going anywhere, they are escaping. Ayn Rand was extremely skeptical when it comes to the role a government has in society. According to Rand, most of the power which the government holds is based upon the government's mandates, a mandate to deal with criminals. Therefore, Rand believed that if a government wants to become more powerful, it should simply create more rules, resulting in more criminals. She wrote, There is no way to rule innocent men. The only power any government has is the power to crack down on criminals. Well, when there aren't enough criminals, one makes them. One declares so many things to be a crime that, be that it becomes impossible for man to live without breaking rules. In addition to this, by creating more rules, the power of governments can increase further by using guilt. Ayn Rand wrote, I mean that there is no way to disarm any man, said Dr. Ferris, except through guilt, through that which he himself has accepted as guilt. If a man has ever stolen a dime, we can impose on him the punishment intended for a bank robber, and he will take it. He will bear any form of misery, he will feel that he deserves no better. If there is not enough guilt in the world, we must create it. Moreover, Ayn Rand did not agree at all with those individuals of the members of the government who pertain to be acting in favor of the the public good, while they create laws which result in restrictions imposed upon society. She wrote, Who is the public? What does it hold as good? There was a time when men believed that the good was a concept to be defined by the code of moral values and that no man had the right to seek his good through the violation of the rights of another. Ayn Rand even compared these proponents of the public good to be almost equal to a, to a burglar, except for the fact that they are desperately seeking for the endorsement of those who they rob. She wrote, If it is now believed that my fellow men may sacrifice me in any manner, they please for the sake of whatever they, they deem to be their own good, if they believe that they may seize my property simply because they need it, well, so does any burglar. There's only this difference. The burglar does not, the burglar does not ask me to sanction his act. Ayn Rand was a strong opponent of the idea that one individual should be required to give to another individual his or her own hard-earned possessions, because the other individual might need it more. One of the characters in Atlas Shrugged is, is fighting this ID, and Ayn Rand wrote, The ID that need is a sacred idol requiring human sacrifices, that the need of some man is the knife of a guillotine hanging over others, that all of us must live with our work, our hopes, our plans, our efforts, at the mercy of the moments when that knife will descend upon us, and that the extent of our ability is the extent of our danger, so that success will bring our heads down on the block, while well, failure will give us the right to pull the cord. This is the horror which Robin Hood immortalized as an, as an ideal of righteousness. Ayn Rand strongly opposed the idea that Robin Hood was virtuous because he stole from the rich and gave to the poor. Instead, Ayn Rand argued that Robin Hood was one of the worst kinds of people, using pity and need as his excuse to rob. She wrote, he is held to be the first man who assumed a halo of virtue by practicing charity with wealth which he did not own, by giving away goods which he had not produced, by making others pay for the luxury of his pity. It is the foulest of creatures, the double parasite who lives on the souls of the poor and the blood of the rich, whom men have become to regard as a moral ideal. Rand even goes so far as to argue that as long as we believe that um, Robin Hood is virtuous, we cannot prosper as a society. She wrote, until men learn that of all human symbols, Robin Hood is the most immoral and the most contemptible, there will be no justice on earth and no way for mankind to survive. As you may have noticed, Ayn Rand's philosophy is quite harsh. Uh, Rand appears to, to entirely lack any pity for the poor, which might be justifiable in some cases. However, what about the less fortunate. What about those people that inherently lack the cap capability to flourish in a capitalist, laissez-faire society? They might need a certain kind of Robin Hood, otherwise they might not be able to survive in such a society. And online one can already find many articles presenting long lists of problems, uh, such as a list presented by CBS, of the top 10 reasons why they believe Ayn Rand was wrong. However, many of these reasons, reasons are barely based on virtue and thereby to a certain extent also prove Ayn Rand's arguments. In my opinion, however, there exists one fundamental issue with Ayn Rand's philosophy, and similar to the uh, articles online, it is also uh, mostly based on morality. 
I believe that Rand had some extremely interesting arguments and, and I believe it is immensely valuable that Rand has pointed us to the this idea of the horror of Robin Hood. However, I believe that there are definitely people out there who are in need of assistance and I personally also believe that they should be helped in some way. And Ayn Rand does not really touch on this issue and as such, as long as this issue is not properly dealt with, I believe her philosophy cannot really be put into to, protect, to practice entirely. And I also do not really know what the, what the solution will be for this gap in Ayn Rand's philosophy. So if you have any theory or any idea, then please, uh, please let me know in the comments as well. Although one might be inclined not to agree entirely with the ideas presented by Ayn Rand, I believe that there is at least one important lesson which we can take away from her philosophy, even if we do not agree with her at all. And this is that we should be careful when someone asks us to sacrifice something for the public good. And we should not do this because the public good is not, as a, not an important value, but because those that claim to be acting in favor of the public good might have some selfish motives themselves. So in this case, I believe that uh, Rand was heavily influenced by Friedrich Nietzsche as well, uh, who presented an interesting idea in his book, Das Spoke Zarathustra. Nietzsche called those who preach for more equality uh, and more virtue, tarantulas. Because according to Nietzsche, they are merely jealous uh, of their own lack of power. So Nietzsche wrote, Vengeance will be used and insult against all who are not like us. Thus do the tarantula herds pledge themselves and will to equality. That, it sh that itself shall henceforth be the name of virtue. And, again, and against all that have power, will raise an outcry. Similar to Rand, uh, Nietzsche argued that as soon as these tarantulas were to acquire real power, they would abuse it even more than those whom they previously deplored. He wrote, and when they call themselves the good and the just, forget not, forget not that for them to be Pharisees, nothing is lacking but power. Which is exactly what also happens in Atlas Shrugged. So thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, then please let me know in the, in the comments. And if you like this kind of topics, then please also consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. So thank you very much and have a nice day.